Welcome to fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. This incredible place is known worldwide, primarily for its intense gambling, extremely fine dining, shopping, and unique nightlife. What happens in Vegas almost always stays in Vegas, but not for the unique situation of three-time cancer survivor, 38-year-old Matt Burnsworth. I've been working out since I was 14 years old. I mean, my dad was like a bodybuilder in the 70s. I grew up, you know, training and eating and dieting, but I went to the doctors and I wasn't feeling right for about, you know, two years. And they would run all these tests on me and they saw that like, well, you look in pretty good shape, you know, your blood tests are coming back perfect. Um, and one of the doctors actually wrote down on a piece of paper, eat more vegetables. So I thought, you know, maybe I need a nutritionist. Um, maybe that's something new I could do. And uh, I saw a UFC fighter who was getting ready for a championship fight. And he was training at the Philippi Sports Institute. And they did a big thing on how elite the training was. And the, you know, they had a nutritionist there. And it was world class. So kind of looked into it. and liked what I saw and I decided to go there. Approximately 15 minutes south of the Las Vegas Strip, you'll notice the Philippi Sports Institute, which is operated by American world champion, power lifter and strongman, Mark Philippi, accompanied by his wife, Tracy Philippi. The Philippi Sports Institute is a fully equipped and modernized training facility with strongman equipment, tools, techniques, and support services in strength training, nutrition, rehabilitation, and sports therapy. We get a variety of athletes at PSI, Philippi Sports Institute. It goes by PSI uh, from ages 10 on up to professional. You know, we have Jason Giambi in here, Nolan Arenado, who plays for the Colorado Rockies, Jermaine O'Neal, Al Harrington, We've had fighters, Stefan Bonner, Frank Mir, Bryce Harper. So we get a, a wide range of pro athletes, but we train athletes all the way down to 10 years old too and anywhere in between. Yeah, Matt came in a long time ago and uh, you know was very interested in getting stronger, had decent strength. And then I know Tracy put him on a nutritional program. We got him on our program, we treated him like an athlete. Like everybody else that comes in, we try and make it as athletic as possible, designed a program for him. And I know he was getting pretty strong always had a smile on his face, but he was also very serious when he was doing his workout. So you really knew he had some goals that he wanted to meet and uh, he really got into it. But always that nice smile and always made you feel very comfortable when you were around him. Like every couple of months, you know, they try to see where you're at performance wise. So they have you do like a max day where they see how much you can do. And the exercise that day, we were doing squats. And I believe I got up to well over 600 pounds on the bar. I felt fine. I actually got the lift. It took me two attempts. I got the lift, um, felt fine. I, I did it perfectly. And, but the next day, uh, I woke up. I get in the shower, and I'm taking a shower. And I felt this lump by my groin. So I start searching on Google and online and everything I'm reading. It uh, sounded like I have an in, had an inguinal hernia. I go to the doctors, you know, he looks at it. He doesn't even think about giving me a CT scan. I mean, it looked cut and dry, textbook. It's a inguinal hernia. Schedules a surgery. You know, I have the surgery. They knock me out. I'm in and out of the hospital. I come back in five days from a checkup, and he just comes into the room and he's like all quiet and. He said, hey, you know, we, we didn't do the surgery on you. We, uh, and I was like, hey, man, it sure felt like you did the surgery on me. And uh, he said, no, when we opened you up, I mean, it was your whole insides were covered in tumors. You know, the, uh, which was pretty scary. But, you know, at the time, he really didn't make it sound that serious. You know, he just said that all I'd have to do would be go to maybe someplace like the Mayo Clinic and get the tumors frozen off. So it didn't really sound like a big deal. No, I mean, and it turned out to be a, a, a huge deal. You know, when Matt first came to me to go through our nutrition program, I remember, you know, he came in with a pen and pencil and he was very serious about what I had to say. And after working with him, because the program's about six weeks long, he followed that to the T. I mean, and if he had questions, if he needed help shopping, 
I mean, he'd be texting or calling me. So it was exciting when you have somebody like that that really wants to achieve the best by just, you know, following what you have set before them. And, and Matt gets an A plus on that. You know, because I had my colon removed, my gallbladder removed, all of these crazy allergies. I have all these different things to deal with that not like the typical person has to deal with. I feel, I feel like working with her got me to a point that I would have no way in a million years got by myself just reading books and looking stuff up online. You know, when somebody walks in the door, we evaluate everybody. We, we put them through an evaluation, sit down with them, go through the evaluation, design a program for them. And we train athletes both in small groups and individually. It depends upon the situation. In Matt's situation, obviously he needs some individual attention. And I think that was the only way we were going to be able to, to specialize his program to overcome the areas that we had to watch, you know, with surgeries and areas where we had to pay special attention to design things that would, you know, not injure him and help him get stronger and, and healthier. So we, we put some time into individualizing his program and um, I think, you know, it was, it was, has helped him to, to some degree. Honestly, working out here, if you think about it, it saved my life. I mean, not only because, you know, there was the incident where they gave me the biggest dose of chemotherapy that could have killed me. I mean, just like mentally too, because when you are going through like a huge, like catastrophic thing, like, like that, it just helps to have like people behind you. You know, six years ago, I found out I had cancer for the first time and it came back two times after that. The people here have been so supportive, but you know, Doc here has, I, I don't think maybe there's like one day in the last six years that he hasn't texted me or called me or emailed me to act, like, I'm not talking like day, a day out of the week, you know, in six years where he isn't reached out to me to ask me how I'm doing. On a regular basis when I deal with patients and other clientele for rehabilitatory purposes, you deal with something not as serious. And most of the time, almost all the time, it's, it's, it's non-lethal, it's non-threatening. His case was profoundly the exact opposite. It was potentially terminal. And then to have him come out of it once, thinking you're in the clear, all right, let's get going after that and then it reoccurs. Okay, let's see what we can do. Follow up, what can I find out? What status are you in? What do I need to know? What do I need to adapt to? That's probably where it originated. I didn't want to negate any possibility that I can somewhat dictate in order to get an advancement of how to help him recover. But saying that, he's, uh, he's that type of guy that you don't want to let down. You know, I had these extensive, massive surgeries. I was I've had ribs removed. I had my stomach literally cut open from, you know, the top, complete top of my stomach to the bottom of it. You know, had my ab muscles completely opened up. I even had a, a colostomy bag, like I, I had chest tubes in. So I had all these like unique and really hard things to, to deal with. Doc was able to figure out a program where not only was I rehabilitating these injuries and getting back to a normal life, but at the same time I was getting stronger, gaining muscle, you know, looking better, feeling better, you know, at the same time as rehabilitating an injury. And I think that's, that's a really unique thing. I'm grateful to Matt for walking in the door and I'm just happy that I had a small part, hopefully, in helping him out. He's, he's taught and done a lot more for us than, than I've ever done for Matt. And I appreciate just hopefully, you know, having a small part in that. You know, I, I can only tell you the amazing journey to be with Matt during the last six years. When Mark and I first opened the Institute, I mean, one of my prayers was, is, you know, we're a small mom and pop shop that I wanted the Lord to send us good people. And boy, did he answer my prayer when Matt arrived on the scene, because not only, 
as you saw his journey, and it was quite a journey. I mean, just the drive, the determination, and it made me a better nutritionist. There's no question about it. And even today when I see Matt coming through that door, I want to be the best person I can be. There's no question. I mean, anyone who's been around Matt in the last six years and knows his journey, you're a better person also because of it. It's, it's hard not to be influenced by a guy like that and then interpret it through life. You really, you, once you see someone go through that ordeal, it's hard not to evaluate your life and s figure out what's really important and what's somewhat, especially in this town, what's superficial and cosmetic. You start to tell what's sincere and through the heart. And then you kind of dismiss certain things that don't, don't really matter anymore. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for this place. I mean, I know people say that, like, oh, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for this. Like, I literally wouldn't be here if it wasn't for this place. Just as much as Dr. Sugar Baker is responsible for, you know, getting the cancer off of my lung or out of my stomach um, and saving my life, coming here is every bit as responsible for me being alive today. For me, it wasn't a death sentence. It was actually like an awakening to a whole new appreciation for life, you know? I appreciate now every day that I can come into the gym and lift weights. I really know this time that, you know, I wanna show people that, you know, uh, I, I not only came out on top, I came out better than I was before. The story of how the Philippi Sports Institute saved a life is just one of many life-altering stories that our truly amazing world has to offer. Individuals all over the world struggle and overcome absolutely incredible obstacles every single day. The 1130 Foundation is proud to take the initiative to broadcast these optimistic stories in hopes to spread the word of positivity and greatness. Our mission is to make a lasting, encouraging impact on as many lives as we possibly can.